Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. Right into the articles, Ripple records the largest daily active address creation for the first time ever. In Ripple's six years plus history, this is the first time it is seeing the current level of a single day daily active creation. Crypto data provider Sentiment noted. On Sentiment's tweet, Ripple recently saw its largest single day in daily active addresses created in the token six year history. According to our SAN data platform, XRP is up 16.3% since the spike last week, only overshadowed due to Ethereum's rise. SAN data available here. The tweet is available if you're unable to look at your screen. There's charts and graphics. <clears throat> Pardon me that you can come back and check. Upswings in the daily active address created has been seen in July last year when the XRP price was declining. In December, the price bottomed out and started surging in 2020, and soon after, addresses started picking up as well. This month, two such spikes have been seen, each one making a new record. XRP community and investors are surely getting ready for a bull market. Another chart, if you're able to see your screen, feel free to come back and check those again. As always, we do provide the links in the description below. The past week XRP price has surged nearly 16%, while so far in 2020, it is up 70% trading at 32.5 cent. And the performance of the third largest digital asset was only overshadowed due to the price or the rise in Ethereum price which is up a whopping 109% on a year-to-date basis. Going forward, experts are still bullish on this cryptocurrency with trader Crypto Michael expecting another over a 100% move. Having broken the two-year-old downtrend and a retest breaking above 3,000 Satoshis and likely continuation towards 3,700 or 4,400, and maybe even 6,700 Satoshis, said the trader. Meanwhile, trader Scott Melker has just two words for XRP. Blast off. XR pool, XRP bull magic poop cannon made his appearance on crypto Twitter after a long time and only to share that this could be the real deal. The XRP price chart the analyst said it looks identical to that of 2017, a bull rally of which XRP was the top performer before the massive rally. Moreover, the resistance has also been thoroughly destroyed by the asset. Now it's to be seen what will be the local top of this rally and wait for a new all-time high. The Ripple Live price at the time of this article was 34.2 cents. With a coin market cap of 14.63 billion and a 24 hour volume of 867.91 million. And I guess it's actually a live price, literally, on the article, because it just changed before us at 34.3 cent with a little bit of an increase. So that's very exciting. Can I connect this into the next thing I want to discuss here? XRP 2020 at 2020 XRP sent me an article with XRP textbook bull flag. You guys know what happens next, right? We're going to start off with the flag pattern signified trend reversals or breakouts after a period of consolidation. There's other stuff you can feel free to read as well. And then we're going to go right into the TA charting where it actually shows the flag pattern. So we're all excited, and I know everyone is watching their account grow, which is a lot of fun. After, let's see, 2017 into the January 2018, around the peak of XRP. So, I mean, we've been holding now for over two years in a, a bearish market. So that was a, a little bit exhausting for many of us investors but we know where the end game is so we're very patient waiting for that 
Next article, how to tap rapid growth in Asia Pacific remittances. Let's get into this article a little bit. The Asia Pacific, the APAC region, is seeing significant growth in remittances. However, due in part to the current challenges associated with moving money between currencies, this high growth in remittances is juxtaposed against the high average cost of sending money. In order to effectively tap the dynamic regional market that drives a volume of nearly 2 billion USD remittance transactions per year, sorry, 2 billion remittance, it's a habit to want to say $2 billion per year, it's important to have global reach with locally relevant service offerings. Businesses looking to offer remittance services must meet recipients where they are. Whether it's money paid out to a mobile account or paid out to cash on a remote island. Though senders ultimately decide the remittance provider, the choice is highly influenced by what their receiver demands. While rapid speed, high reliability, and low cost are required to remain competitive, it's locally relevant coverage and payout options that differentiate service providers. In the second part of our remittance series, we'll explore what takes to grow and win in APAC countries, specifically the Philippines, Thailand, and Australia. <clears throat> in the Philippines, cash dominates, even though the country recently launched a low-value instant payment system that permits users to make digital payments to bank accounts, adoption remains stubbornly low and cash remains as the most critical payout option for remittances. Thus, service providers need to be plugged into the predominant outlets for cash payouts, notably including Cebuana, Luilie, and Palawan. Similarly, cash transactions still represent a staggering 90% of Thailand's domestic payments value. In contrast to the Philippines, though, the low-value instant payment rail in Thailand has seen much higher penetration. PromptPay launched in 2017, reached an average of 4.5 million transactions per day in under two years and attracted an impressive 49 million registered users. As a result, the volume of digital payments increased by 83% from 2016 to 2018. It's important to factor the enormous impact of PromptPay in Thailand to be successful Whereas in the Philippines, you can get far with broad cash coverage in Thailand. Prompt pay is needed as table stakes. Offering cash and other wallets in addition to prompt pay can help gain a competitive edge. Conversely, the Australian remittance market is quite different from the Thai and Filipino remittance markets. In particular, Australia is primarily a sending market for remittances and the demographics of Australian receivers tend to differ from receivers in emerging APAC countries, as they often have high financial inclusion, earn higher incomes, and work as business professionals or students. <coughs> Pardon me. A whopping 99% of the Australian population is banks, so the best approach in Australia is to focus on bank account access through partners or via the new payments platform, NPP. It's important to note that NPP doesn't offer 100% payment coverage yet, as banks continue to expand NPP's integration and utilization capabilities. Since Australia is a mature payments market, instant and transparent payouts with 24-7, 365 availability and upfront visibility of fees can provide a best-in-class ex payment experience. The challenge with all these solutions outlined above is that they're difficult to scale worldwide. For example, it's challenging to develop the most competitive payment capabilities in each of these disparate markets without exhausting working capital and human resources to get there. As such, many organizations resort to partnerships to tap these lucrative markets. However, establishing banking or correspondent partnerships can take considerable time and energy and ultimately may not ensure an optimal experience for customers. Furthermore, to maintain a partnership network, numerous bespoke APIs need to be built and managed in addition to pre-funded accounts and destination currencies, 
all of which lead to high remittance fees. Financial institutions need an easy, transparent, and more efficient way of completing cross-border transactions. Until now, remittance providers needed to work within traditional complex payment rails. Today, blockchain and digital asset technologies are changing the status quo. Banks and payment providers are leveraging RippleNet's ODL as an alternative to traditional free funding. ODL uses the digital asset XRP as real-time liquidity bridge between the sending and receiving currencies. In the span of seconds, customers who use ODL are able to free up capital, guaranteeing the most competitive FX rates to their customers and processing global payments at unprecedented speeds. Taken together, the benefits of speed and cost enable those leveraging ODL to complete more effectively and provide their customers with an easier and more reliable way of sending money home. <clears throat> and ODL is taking over country by country. I think I saw earlier today on Twitter that they are in 70 uh, countries now, and I believe they said 25 of those were running on ODL. I want to end off this video with another statement. Challenges are what make life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes them meaningful. All right, guys, this is not financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. Wishing you the best of days. Until the next one.